Today we got ourselves the NR200P from Cooler Master. It has come out a while ago, but now it comes in a variety of colors, one of which being this one. Comes with either a mesh side panel or tempered glass. Um, and you have the option to choose between either one. And the interesting thing about this case is even though it's a bit large for a mini ITX case, is it takes ATX type of elements and shrinks it down to an ITX form factor. So it's very accessible, very modular, and gives you plenty of configurations for choosing fan placement and how you want to configure your internal components. And that comes at a price of about $140 MSRP for this. So if you want one that comes in a color or if you want to get it slightly cheaper, you get one in black or white and without the tempered glass side panel. So you have some options. But if color is your deal, then this is the way to go. And I'm going to walk you through what it's like building inside this PC case. So let's get to it. First things first, up top, your I.O. options include a power reset button, two USB 3.0 ports, and a audio jack. On the back here, you have configurations to have a horizontal or vertical GPU, which can fit either three slots or two slots, respectively. Also getting familiar with the case, there's pretty much mesh on every single panel except for the front and the rear here. Now, to take apart the case, it's fairly tools-free and pretty hands-on. So, to take apart the side panels here, there's two pins that kind of go into the case here and it hangs off, which is kind of lipped at the bottom over here on the bottom of the panel. So that's nice and it makes it fairly easy. These mesh filters are okay. They kind of just stick with adhesive magnetic parts. It is what it is, I guess. It has to meet a certain price point. And the finish on all the color on the outside and the inside is actually really nice. It's a very nice finish. There's not really too many blemishes that I can notice right off the bat. For the other side panel, same deal. Take it out from the two pins up top, hangs off on the ledge and it removes very nicely. And if you wanna remove the top panel here, there are four screws at each corner of the case that should remove the top panel. And as for the bottom of the case, there is one screw back here that you have to undo. So by removing the one screw, you can then pop out the bottom of this, which is kind of hinged in as well. It's a similar design to the side panels. And last but not least, I'm gonna take off the top panel. Now that I removed all four screws, you pull out the back of this tab over here. Obviously I did it very easily, but it does require a little bit of effort to get this out. It's a little bit stubborn but it does come out pretty nicely. Um, it's very secure in there. So that's why I kind of did it before recording. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is remove this side panel over here, which can either host a radiator, uh, a hard drive or fans. And this is removable with two screws right here. So take that out and this should come right out. And I almost forgot the last removable item is the front panel, which comes out nice and easy. Just have to pull at it also held in with these four pins or pegs. And this is a good place to store cables or put in uh, SSDs. So there is a tray mounting system here for SSDs if you want to. But if you have any excess cables, you can try routing it up over here since there's not gonna be any fans, uh, just a suggestion. Now getting familiar with the interior of the case, this is the wall which we will be mounting the motherboard to, and this is where the PSU will be hiding in. Now the PSU is configurable for either SFX or SFXL. Now I do have a PSU from Cooler Master, it's the V750, which is an SFX, so we won't have to use the larger option over here, which lets you move the tray a little bit higher to accommodate for the bigger size of the PSU. Um, but that will also give you some clearance issues with using a radiator down low and, and using a bigger GPU, I believe. So just keep that in mind, but it is configurable for either size option. Now to remove the tray, you just have to remove these two screws over here and this should slot right out and then you can install your PSU into the tray separately from the case. All right, this is the V750 SFX power supply from Cooler Master, provided by Cooler Master, thank you. Um, it's insane how insanely small this is and how much power it provides. I mean, not too long ago, it would have been really hard to find something like this. 
and have it be relatively efficient. And it is fully modular, by the way. So this is gonna fit very well with inside the case. If you are interested in checking this out, there will be a link for this down in the description below with as well as the case. And you can also install an SSD on this tray over here on the back. All right, now that I have all the cables plugged into the power supply, I'm gonna go ahead and install the motherboard before I install this. Uh, the ribbon cables are very nice for a small ITX case and they're relatively short so you're not dealing with a ton of extra cables within your mini ITX case. I also want to point out the accessories that come with this case. You get two fans with the grill guards over here to protect from any potential cables getting in the way and getting chopped up and it also comes with a three-way fan splitter which is awesome. They're all four pins so they are PWM enabled which is great. Now beneath here, you get your screws, zip ties, and also PCIe riser cable, which is great in case you want to do vertical GPU mounting. So you have pretty much everything you need included with this case if you want to use all the configurations possible. All right, so I went ahead and got the motherboard installed here. The amount of clearance and access is absolutely amazing. So it's going to make plugging everything in so much easier because Plugging in the EPS cable over here or the CPU power connector is always a tough spot because the top panel is usually not removable in a lot of cases, even ATX size cases. So the fact that we have access from almost every single side makes this so much easier. And then another nice thing is for the power reset connectors over here, the really tiny ones, they come grouped together. So it makes it very easy to plug into the motherboard. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get pretty much everything routed for connectivity and get the PSU tray installed as well. All right, that didn't take very long. It was pretty easy to put this all back in with all the wires connected. So there is some cable management, albeit very little. There's two Velcro straps down here and another two up over here. They are a little bit tricky to get to since they are wedged in between the RAM and the PSU tray. So if you want, you can remove the RAM sticks and route your wires and then uh, get them within the Velcro straps and then plug in your RAM. Um, otherwise, everything else is very easy to get to. And now the next thing I'm going to do is actually plug in the GPU, which I usually wait till last because it obstructs a lot of things. However, I'm going to be using the GPU horizontally here, and that will be used as the intake fans. And then the two fans that were included with the case here are going to be going up top over here as exhaust fans. Now, that being said, I'm going to plug in the fan splitter cable because the fan header is up over here right next to the GPU, so it might be a little tight to get to. All right, everything fits in here very nicely, pretty snug. Now, my only stipulation is, is that the wires get a little choked up back, back over underneath the PSU tray. So that's the only thing that I would be a little bit worried about. So you gotta be a little bit conscious about that and route your cables in as flat as possible to fit the extra length of the GPU fitting underneath there. Otherwise, you can move the whole PSU tray up one rung for the SFX L configuration, and then you would give yourself more space over here. Now, the only drawback with that is that when you wanna fit fans up on top of the case, you lower your clearance. So that's just something to keep in mind. So anyways, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and install the top mounted fans. All right, so this is the top panel here, and as you can notice, there's already like a cutout for these fans to go into place. Now, the fans that are included come with these pre-installed pins or pegs, if you will, and they literally just pin in right into the rubber grommets here. A very easy and simple solution for something that could be quite tedious, especially since that this whole entire panel is removable. All right, so before I install the top mounted fans, I'm gonna get the all-in-one liquid cooler installed onto this tray here. So if the camera is focused on it, that would be great. Um, but basically, this is going to be installed with the fans and radiator included. These will be exhaust fans here. So once I have both the radiator and the fans installed onto this tray, I will go ahead and install the AIO pump and the CPU fans. And then I'll install the top mounted fans of the case. All right, so I just wanted to point out I have the AIO block already installed here. I have the fans and radiator on the tray here. And I also have the AIO pump and the fan splitter plugged in before I plug in this uh, tray. So first I'm gonna get the top mounted fans installed and connect the fan splitter to the top mounted fans and then get the wires 
coordinated where I want them to be. And the final part will be just setting this into place and latching it and screwing it back into the case. And it's pretty much done. So I did make a few minor tweaks before I put everything back together. So for the AIO to fit, I had to flip around the block as well as the tubes, just so that it would fit a lot easier in here. And I wouldn't be cramming them into the corner over here. And I also moved the GPU power cables all the way off to the side over here and routed within the front of the case. This way, it's not sitting on top of the GPU, which interferes with some of the clearance coming in from the radiator and fans sitting around this area. So I wanted to make sure this was all cleaned up before I put this all back together and out of the way. So with that being said, I'm going to put this back into place and it should fit in nicely. And I'll reassemble the case and get into the final thoughts. Overall thoughts on the case. It's absolutely fantastic. Probably one of the best ITX cases I've ever built in. It's very accessible, very easy to get the things. If you need to reformat, plug in something else, rearrange something, it's very easy to do. It's very headache free. And this was a very quick video to make. I mean, this probably would have taken a lot longer with some of the other ITX cases I've built in. So the fact that this made everything so much easier just gives me high praise for this case, especially this color. Absolutely love it. So for $140, I do recommend it. And it does come in cheaper variations if you're interested in doing that, if you don't really want any of the colors provided here. Only negative things I could say is that there's really not that much routing for cables i mean you do have the psu tray with a couple of velcro straps on it and you do have the front panel over here which does have a gap to put some ssds behind here and a couple of wires if you want to but aside from that it's really not going to look pretty unless you have like custom fitted cables to this case that's really the only negative thing aside from the dust filters that are really flimsy but I really can't say anything else negative about it. I really enjoyed building in this case and I would highly recommend it if you really want something accessible, configurable, and it's a little bit on the larger side for an ITX case. It's gonna be very desk friendly and it's gonna look beautiful, especially with a custom keyboard and desk mat that matches this color. I mean, you can really get a nice setup going on over here. Anyways, I'm loving the beach theme. It's August. I want to go to the beach. I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.